Hello Booktube, this is Weekly Reads. My original plan for this reading week was to bookend um, two Bell Redemptions. Uh, a Bell Redemption is a revisit of a book that I have previously belled on in the hope that um, I will be able to finish it. Sometimes it might take a few tries before either I, do, I succeed and I Bell Redeem the book or... I finally decided to give up, which are Bell Redemption Rejections. So the two books this week were The Maleficent Seven by Cameron Johnston and Miracles of Our Own Making, A History of Paganism by Liz Williams. Starting with Maleficent Seven, um, obviously the title will tell you that this book is inspired by Seven Samurai and the Magnificent Seven. Um, unlike the prior two books, the um, gimmick of the Maleficent Seven is that while in most cases the Seven are more or less heroic, um, these Seven are decidedly villainous. Black Karen was your standard dark lady. Um, she was hours away from conquering the whole of her home continent. Her enemies were besieged in one last stronghold when she decided to disappear. And 40 years later, she resurfaces, uh, gathering six of her surviving generals. Um, in a last desperate attempt to defend her home village from an encroaching empire that is fueled by religious fanaticism. Um, I build on the book the first time um, about not quite a hundred pages in and I build on the book again a little bit less than that on page 70 about the start of chapter 15. And my problem with the book comes at the very beginning. Why does Black Heron abandon her troops at the moment of victory? Well, because the plot needs her to. That's why. Um, if you're going to have a retired monster, well, she's either has to be a defeated monster or whatever the hell Black Heron is. Um, and no reason that the book may give really, ex yeah, includes the fact that the plot needed her to abandon her troops. Um, although perhaps maybe would have made more sense if she just fled after being defeated, but whatever. Um, my other issue with the book is that, um, the characters, this, uh, this, uh, this other six, um, particularly, um, Meven, who is, for most of the book, the main, um, point of view character, or at least of what I read, um, none of them really layer as characters. They never really develop. They're always static and just uninteresting and the attempts at humor peppered throughout the book just don't work. So this is a Bell Redemption rejection and I'm pretty sure there will be no second attempts. Um, I'm pretty, or third attempt I guess, um, I'm pretty done with this and I will probably um, prune it at the next time I prune my collection. So that works out. Um, so Miracles of Our Own Making, A History of Paganism by Liz Williams. So um, this book I had selected for um, Nonfiction November for two reasons. One is that I did want to devote some of my Nonfiction November readings to Bell Redemptions, but also because um, this book uh, matches the first prompt of Olive's 
uh, for prompts uh, fraud because much of the history of paganism, particularly um, contemporary paganism, is rooted in fraud. Well, I guess you could say in fraud. Um, a lot of traditions initially claimed an unbroken descent from um, ancient or prehistoric um, paganism. And they very much are not. They are very much um, 20th century creations rooted in um, what the 19th century and early 20th century thought those earlier pagan faiths were. But anyway, so um, Liz Williams looks at that. Um, um, this book is a history of paganism, particularly British paganism, not only uh, in a contemporary format, but also um, throughout history, starting with um, the Celts, the um, and then the Saxons and Vikings, and then on through to the present. And I vote on this book largely because it's not very good. Um, I don't think nonfiction is really Liz Williams' strong suit. Um, I actually learned that she is a science fiction writer and that she's really only written, I think, two works of nonfiction. Um, and I think this is probably her first. But the book reads like it's like a student wrote it. Um, it's just not really good. Um, and I made it, I think, a little bit further this time than last time, although that's not saying much because it was like before the second. Like I decided to quit at the second chapter. I think the first time I was within the first chapter. So, but it just, yeah. So I think if you're really interested in the history of paganism, particularly contemporary paganism, um, then probably check out the work of Ronald Hutton, particularly for a British context, because I know his work, uh, Drawing Down the Moon, is really good at that. Um, and I think he's got other works that look uh, more at the earlier forms of the traditional um, polytheistic religions of Britain and perhaps Europe as well, which I have not gotten to yet. But... I probably should, because I actually quite like his work. So, again, this is a Bill Redemption rejection, and I think this one might get pruned at the next printing, because I think I might do uh, some history as well, although I might... I don't know, because part of me is thinking of taking the bookcase that is that currently houses the classics, modern, contemporary fiction, poetry, and drama, and explaining the history wall to that, too. And then clearing out the um, science fiction and fantasy books that are in this room, kind of like parching them and the ones that are out in the hall, and then using that for classics, modern, contemporary fiction, poetry, and drama. But anyway... But I'll talk a lot more about that when I do a uh, video about library plans and also my thoughts on the history section of my library, which I was hoping to do today, but I didn't. So anyway, now my original plan for this reading week was that's annoying. Um, was to basically read The Maleficent 7 on Friday and then Saturday and Sunday afternoon and then finishing it up Monday or Tuesday as things turned out. Uh, my plan for Saturday and Sunday morning was to read Pluto by um, Naoki Urasawa and Osamu Tezuka. So Pluto is a reimagining of um, the greatest robot storyline from Osamu Tezuka's um, Astro Boy. 
which is why um, Osamu Tezuka is co-credited. Um, and so uh, Pluto is about a German or a European um, detective android named Gessicht, who is investigating the assassinations of the other six uh, great androids of the world, um, as well as uh, human um, experts in robotics who were part of the Bora survey um, that investigated the Persian kingdom in the lead up to the 39th um, Central Asian War, which is basically the Iraq War. Um, and so he gradually investigates, he uh, talks to the other um, androids, uh, they're slowly killed off, he kind of slowly puts the pieces together while dealing with his own faulty or um, uh, removed memory uh, of an event um, that's unrelated to the main storyline. And eventually um, having to deal with the um, various machinations, not only of the serial killer who's targeting the androids and also the Bora survey group, but also uh, to take revenge on the United States of Thracia, which is basically the United States, uh, for its role in the 39th Central Asian War. And... Um, the further machinations of that. Huh. Um, this is a richly complex um, manga series of eight volumes um, that ran in the early uh, 2000s, and it is amazing. I really enjoyed it. Um, this is the second or third time that I've read it. Um, I read it once in, I think, the late 2000s or early 2010s. Tens, and I might have read it again sometime around there. Um, but when I decided to restart my manga collection, I knew that uh, Pluto was one of the series that I wanted to uh, collect, and it is highly recommended. Um, not only is it really good, but it is also short, which a lot of the manga that I like are not. Um, but I wanted to show you some selected images. Um, of the um, book. So um, the opening uh, pages of each volume are actually in color. Um, and there are also a few images that are colored uh, throughout the series, besides the um, first uh, pages. Let me. Um, so there's that. And the artwork is amazing. Um, Hopefully, I will be able to show you some of the um, atmospheric artwork, because that is amazingly well done. What's that? I um, want to show you real quickly a picture of Adam, who um, is, I think, the... Um, actual name of the android that um, is the central character of Astro Boy, who, and I think most um, Western media is probably called Astro Boy, even so. In this, it's he's called Adam. There's that. Then that. And there's Adam. So yeah, it's really amazing. So yeah. So again, volume one with Gesek on the cover. Volume two has Adam on the cover. 
Volume 3 has Urin Adam's sister on the cover. Volume 4 has Professor Tenma, who is um, Adam's creator. And also the... Um, he's not quite the villain, but he's involved. Um, volume 5 has um, Hercules on the cover. He's one of the um, seven androids. So Gessick, Adam... Hercules, Brando, Mont Blanc, North Number Two, and Epsilon. So, Volume Six has uh, Doctor Otenemizu, who is um, sort of an adoptive father to Adam, and is actually the creator of Urine or Uran. Vol volume Seven has um, Epsilon on the cover. In volume eight has um, Ash, um, Adam, uh, Adam again. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, this is a fantastic series. Now, if you will excuse me, I have to go get um, two of the books that I read that I forgot to pull um, for Sunday and Monday. No, Sunday and Tuesday because Monday I did a try chapter tag of. Um, some science fiction and fantasy that I have that I did a tri chapter type video on Tuesday. But anyway, let me go get the some volumes of poetry real quick. So on Sunday. I uh, reread Voluntary Servitude by Mark Wunderlich. This is a fantastic collection of poetry that uh, I really needed to read on Sunday. It was really good and welcomed. And on Tuesday, I reread Hosts and Guests by Nate Klug, which, again, was needed. I really enjoyed this reread. Um, I'm really hoping that Nate Klug um, publishes more collections of poetry in the near future because this was really good. Okay, now that leads me up to um, the start of November, which I already talked about Miracles of Our Making um, earlier. So my plan was to read this over the uh, work week, which did not happen. So I decided to focus on the four prompts from... Um, this year's nonfiction November. So this was for fraud. Um, for web, it was going to, I chose um, The Red Hourglass, The Lives of the Predators by Gordon Grice. This is a work of natural history that um, follows, there are basically um, essays about various um, predatory animals, mostly um, spiders and it's mostly, I think, let me go. Some point I will get. Okay. So it's the black widow, mantids, rattlesnake, tarantula, pig, canid, recluse. So of the one, two. So of the seven, uh, three are spiders. One is an insect, one's a snake, and two are mammals. And this is a wonderful collection. Um, I've read this several times, and I have loved it every time. I'm currently uh, about to start on Tarantula tomorrow. So I've read Black Widow, um, Mantid, and Rattlesnake, and those were all fantastic, just wonderful. And uh, we'll hopefully finish the book tomorrow. And I will give a hopefully fuller um, discussion of this book next week for weekly for next week's weekly read. So, sticking with um, the nonfiction November prompts, um, hopefully on Sunday I will be able, and if I finish the Red Hourglass in, with enough time, hopefully I'll be able to start this book and then continue on. 
Sunday and finish it up on Sunday. I'm hoping to bell redeem Gay Bar, Why We Went Out by Jeremy Etherton Lynn. So this is a book about gay bars. And I'm hoping I can get to O'Keefe and Stieglitz, an American romance by Benita Isol, uh, over the work week. But my mom has an appointment on Monday. And I think at least the start of my reading day on my, or kind of like when I do my reading on the work week, um, a part of that will be uh, during that appointment. So I don't know if I really want to take this big book with me. I mean, I still might. I don't know. I'll make my decision. If I decide not to, then I will probably start on um, a Bell Redemption of Collapse, The Fall of the Soviet Union by uh, Vladislav M. Zubok. Um, and then get to O'Keefe and Stieglitz another time. But I will report back, obviously, on next Friday on what my how I decide to do things are. So that's my reading plans for next week. I'm hoping next week to do an original tag. Um, I have one that I've been working on. I'm going to give it a final pass or two this weekend, and hopefully I'll have that up on Monday, and then maybe on Tuesday do another tag video, and then do some videos Wednesday and Thursday and on Friday, and yeah, and of course weekly reads. So anyway, BookTube, until I see you next week, thank you, have a great rest of your evening and weekend, and stay safe.